Longhorn beetle larvae make burrows under the bark of the eucalypts that grow near my house. They leave interesting patterns on the surface of the timber that you can see here. I'm going to turn some weed pots from this very wet timber as an experiment to firstly see if I can retain some of the texture of the wormy wood and also to see if I can limit the amount of cracking as the timber dries by slowing down the drying process. You can see that the timber is soaking wet as I start this turning. The tree has been cut down about four months, so it has had a little time to season. I start with a nice, freshly sharpened roughing gouge and roughly centre the workpiece, firmly tightening it between centres. And you can see it's pretty tight up here. It's just, just touching there. Well, that's okay, it's only going to get small. Turning speed is around 500 grit. I can use the roughing gouge to do most of the shaping, but I use a skew chisel to cut the tenon on what will be the base of the piece. My goal here is to get a good enough finish from the gouge so that I don't need to do any sand. One of the other things I'm practicing here is making a pleasing form or shape. You can get your inspiration from anywhere and I usually try out a particular form and then repeat it several times to see what it looks like with different height and width ratios. These experimental turnings are a great exercise and if they go horribly wrong then I'm not losing any really valuable timber. Here I'm carefully refining the form, making sure to get a nice smooth shape and a flowing line. Turning the work press around, I now mount it by the tenon on the chuck and finish shaping it. I missed a shot here where I turned down the top to final diameter, but it's now ready to be drilled using a 4mm diameter drill. I mount this in a chuck inserted in the tailstock. Backing out the drill occasionally to clear the waste stops the bit overheating and clogging. Next I'm using a thin parting tool that I made from a big old hacksaw blade, the sort that are used in machines to cut metal. I finish the parting with a hand saw. I'm cleaning it up a little with a carving gouge, but this wood is hard and it's a tough job. Normally I would like to have a much cleaner base on the product I was going to sell, but this is an experiment that could still crack badly, so I don't want to waste too much time here. This bit of wood has been out in the rain, and you can see here how wet it still is. So now I'm going to put a coat of wax oil mixture on it and put it with the others in a plastic bag in a cool, dry spot. Two weeks have passed and I'm looking to examine progress. Over the two weeks some mould grew on the wet surface causing it to go black. I'm going to call this spalting and live with it. You can see some cracks are starting to show, so I'm going to give it another coat of wax and put it away again. Now another two weeks have passed and we have some more mould. If anything though, the small cracks from two weeks ago have stabilised. The bottom looks relatively crack free. I'll wax it again and put it away. Who knows, one day I might just sell it. About this point, I decided to torch some of the other turnings. It came up better than I expected, showing up the grain in the otherwise blandish wood. 
I expect to see a bit more of this technique in my future work. I guess the conclusion here is that you can minimise cracking by slowing down the drying process, but growing mould is an issue. Anyway, I had fun doing the turnings, and that's the main thing.